Welcome back. Grace is still reading, but we are playing as Gabriel. And we have a couple of places to go, which are not in town, so it's time to break out the Harley again. For one thing, we saw Estelle leave on her bike earlier, by herself. I'll go get the Harley. And we can now see her driving around. As we saw before, and you can tell it's uh, her by the color of the dot, because that matches the color of the bike. So, let's go somewhere where we can follow her, for example, Chateau de Blanche 4. Any place with a view of the road will do, as we've seen before. So let's see if um, we can follow her, if she deigns to show up. Sometimes it takes a while. Ah, there she goes. By herself. I guess Lady Howard is still too overcome by the whole dead people affair. Well, let's see what the still is up to all by her lonesome. It's always a good thing they keep driving around until Gabriel decides to Estelle follow them. Estelle stopped in the middle of nowhere, as far as I can tell. In the middle of nowhere? Let's see what uh, is here. Except for the road and the bike. I think that's Lady Howard and Estelle's moped. Yeah, we kind of already knew that. Why would they stop here? This place isn't even interesting enough to have a tourist sign. And where are they? That's another good question. This is another confusing location, slightly anyway. Because you kind of need to go this way, I think. The entrance here is a little bit hidden from where the bikes are parked, which is why it can be difficult to find. And it seems Estelle is doing something here with a map. If I were to guess, this probably has something to do with their theory about where the treasure is bur buried. Maybe this is where they think it is. Looks like we got us another treasure hunter. It seems Gabriel had the same thought. Hi, Estelle. Everything okay? Did you follow me here, Mr. Knight? Me? Uh-huh. I just stopped to see if you needed help. I do not need help. But thank you for your concern. Don't mention it. Despite the fact that I didn't have a question mark, we still get, uh, options. So, uh... How come Lady Howard's not with you? Kind of joined at the hip, ain't you? She's had a very difficult morning. I would have stayed with her, but um, time is of the essence. How did you meet Lady Howard, anyway? Her family was the largest landholders in my village. I knew her growing up, of course, but we never played together. She made quite a name for herself on the stage, you know, when she was younger. Huh. And I was working in London myself, as a nurse. I went to see her perform. Well, we became, um, friends. When my father died and left me the cottage, we moved back to Hampstead. It's not exactly the manor she was born to, but it was sold years ago. Ironically, it's on the market again. Does Lady Howard still perform? Well, she's taking a break from her career. By choice, or otherwise? I have a feeling it might be the latter. So, what's out here? 
You can see for yourself. Doesn't look like anything to me. But then you wouldn't be here if that was the case now, would you? Some people don't care to tell other people their business. Oh, that's kind of rude, isn't it? It was a perfectly friendly question. Oh, I I'm sorry. It's just that Lily really prefers we keep our business to ourselves. Some people can be ruthless, you know, particularly... Men? Well, now that you've said so yourself. <laughs> so this is the spot you and Lady Howard are betting your treasure hunting dollars on, huh? Really? I wish you wouldn't ask such things. Hey, just curious. I don't believe in the treasure myself. All that stuff about ciphers and nonsense. Sonier didn't conjure that money. Well, I'm not saying he didn't find something, but what if he took all there was? I don't believe it. There's got to be something here and we... And we've got to find it? <laughs> Why is that, Miss Styles? It's none of your business. I'm sorry, but, but that's all I'm going to say about it. Way to go, Gabe. You've made her upset. I don't have anything else to say to her. Uh, it's more the opposite, I think. She has nothing else to say to you. Looks like we got us another treasure hunter. Well, other than that, there does not appear to be anything here other than a whole bunch of trees. See? Just trees. Can I look at the map? No, that's the stell, because the map wouldn't have a talk icon. Um... And I think that's all we um, need to do here. Now, despite the fact that there was no actual crying baby there, there was definitely something weird going on at Chateau de Serre. Between the robe with the weird symbols and the... Uh, Weird lady talking about Pomme Bleu. So I think Gabriel should follow up on that. We can also go back to Poussin's tomb, but we have no reason to do so at the moment. Now, before we head inside, this is another one of those things that's kind of difficult to figure out that you can do it at all, is um, we want to go outside the gate. Because if you tried to do this with Grace, if you remember, she said she wanted to wait for tour groups. Reasonable enough. But that might uh, make you inclined to think that going out through the gate will, is, uh, will automatically leave. Like you leave the town if you uh, go down the street with the sign. And automatically take the Harley again. But that's in fact not the case. There is another screen here, or screen location, I guess. And from here, you can leave by using the road, same as anywhere else. But what we're interested in is these tire tracks. There are some tire tracks in the dirt. And I have a feeling they might match the uh, tire tread we got earlier. From Prince James's men's car. These tracks match Mallory and McDougal's car. See? Now, why would Prince James's men be snooping around Chateau de Serres? I doubt they came here for the wine. That does seem unlikely. Well, there are two possibilities. Either um, Monsieur Montreux is another acquaintance of them. Just like uh, Larry Chester appeared to be. Or... They were here to accuse Montreux of kidnapping the baby, just like they did with the Abbe. But which one is it? I don't know. Well, unlike uh, Grace, Gabriel can go in through the front door. Or try, anyway.
Je regrette, mais nous sommes fermés. Oh, uh, uh, I have no idea what you just said, but I... Yes, yes, what is it you want? What is it I want? Oh, good question. Let's see. I deserve that. Yeah, you really went in there prepared, didn't you? Seems we're gonna have to find an excuse to be let in. Well, last time we needed uh, that, we um, stole Mosley's badge. I don't think he has it with him. His passport isn't gonna help here. We could, of course, try to deliver a sandwich that has worked in multiple games. Or pizza. Well, I can't very well tell him I'm looking for vampires. I need a cover story. No point in knocking again until I figured out a reason to be here. But we don't actually need to steal anything this time, because we have a means of procuring fake IDs via Sydney. We just need to figure out which one we can use to get inside here. And it is, as far as I know, not possible to print uh, a fake ID before you've at least tried that, although I'm not actually 100% sure about that. I always seem to take the wrong staircase. It's a gift, I guess. Even if it is possible to print it, I would still have done it this way to show you why we need it. Okay, so we have a number of possibilities. Of course, we need one for Gabriel, not Grace. I don't think that's going to get me into a vineyard. You don't really need to think of it yourself, because um, basically only one of them will work. I don't think that's going to get me into a vineyard. Well, I could show you uh, all of them and get the same message on all of them, or I could just uh, pick the one that's actually correct. We want to be a reporter for the New York Times. Hey, that should work. Neat! There we go. A fake ID. That Sydney's kind of useful after all. Well, let's just hope uh, Montreux or his butler or whoever met us at the door isn't smart enough to try and call the New York Times to verify that we work there. But I guess there's only one way to find that out, and that is to try. I'll go get the Harley. This place is called Lady Howard and Estelle's site, so it doesn't seem to have any other purpose than that. Um, okay, we're going back to Chateau de Serre. Which is actually Chateau de Serres with two E's, even though the map spells it with an A. Um, okay, let's see if they buy it. Yes? My name's Knight. I'm a reporter. I'm doing a feature on longer dark wineries, and I'd love to include you in my spread. I'll see if the chateau owner is free. Bonjour, Monsieur Knight. I'm Excelsior Montreux, the owner and viticulturist of Chateau de Serre. Nice of you to see me, Mr. Montreux. I should have made an appointment, but I get better results just knocking about. The best places don't advertise. Ah, well, how true. 
Now allow me to take you to the wine tasting room. Muscle. Well, it seems to have worked at least. What would you like to sell, sir? Ah, are you a red man or a white? No, no, no. Let me guess. Red, yes? Gosh, it shows, huh? Do you like it dry? Oh, <laughs> hell, I'd drink dust if I could. <laughs> well, let's see then. Perhaps the uh, 76 Merlot? Yes, sir. I'm sure Gabriel will make a very convincing wine expert. I'm terribly sorry that you caught us unprepared today. We were about to shut the main gate. Everything's all right, I hope. Oh, yes, it is. Here, anyway. The constable called a little while ago. There was a murder in the vicinity last night. A murder? It's very unusual, I assure you. But I suppose even here we're not immune. Oh, well, we should let it breathe for a moment. Right. <laughs> Nothing worse than suffocated wine. <laughs> okay, let's see what information we can get out of this guy. Quite a lot, by the looks of it. Are you from this area, Mr. Montreux? Yes and no. I grew up in Paris. But my family has owned this estate for decades. My wife and I permanently settled here some years ago. Children do take pleasure in the country air. Oh, you got kids? Oh yes, a beautiful daughter who is away at school. And my firstborn son, Enoch. He's twelve. Have you children? Ah, uh, no. But you must. Oh, children are every man's right to immortality. Well, it's not the kid part I mind so much as the marriage part. Oh, no, no, a wife need not be a burden if she knows her place. Her role is to serve you, after all, to care for home and heirs and leave a man to pursue nobler things. Boy, do we live in different worlds. I didn't think it was possible. We've found the bigger misogynist than Gabriel in this game. What kind of training do you need to be a, a, a viticulturist? The lessons I consider most valuable came from my father. He was quite a master. I ran into an interesting tourist angle today. Seems the Holy Grail is supposed to be around here. Oh, the Grail is a marvelous legend. But most stories are ignorant of the true meaning of the Grail. You see, the Grail has far less to do with Christ than with an idea. The fountain of youth, the eternal flame, the philosopher's stone. All of those are related to the grail? Oh, yes. The grail is that thing, that one thing, whatever symbol you use for it, that represents completion, perfection, the absolute. Do you understand now? Well, no, not really. Turning base lead into pure gold, that is the alchemist's aim. But it's not about real lead and real gold. It's symbolic. Man is the lead. God is the gold. Man to God. That is the alchemist's goal. That is the Holy Grail. Huh. But I thought with the Grail, it was actually the blood. The blood in the Grail that was the, uh, um, you know, the immortal thing. Well, of course. The blood is the elixir of life. The juice of the forbidden fruit. The juice of the forbidden fruit? <laughs> no, never mind. Dusty old series are a hobby of mine. Let's stick to the wine, shall we? He does seem to know an awful lot about this. Do you know anything about the murder? No, not really. There were two men, neither of them from here by the sound of it. Okay. Do you believe the stories about a local treasure? Indeed. It is in my soil, monsieur. Different kind of treasure. What exactly is viticulture? 
You are a wine critic, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's your definition? Well, to me, viticulture is about breeding, and I don't mean the mechanics of grafting. Grafting is only a tool. What's meaningful is the essence of the two vines you're combining. There are literally thousands of grapes, and most viticulturists choose from well-known stock. But my father always bred his own grapes, and has passed down some very rare species. I'm fascinated. Really? Well, I, I don't want to bore you. I'd like to hear more about your breeding program. You won't reveal my secrets? For my ears only. <laughs> Very well. The secret is in mixing the best strains, of course. But there is an art to it. My father taught me to visualize the ideal grape. Once you can visualize this perfect fruit, you can analyze even the best stock and see where it is lacking. In color or body, for example. Or perhaps it could be just a touch sweeter or lighter. And the trick is to find a grape equally fine, but one which is perfect in exactly those areas which the first grape is flawed. The marriage of these two vines will produce an air, and then this air undergoes the same process, you see. <laughs> Don't you ever get where you're going? Eventually. But even in the interim, your grape will soon be far superior to anyone else's. Try the wine, Mr. Knight. Wow, that's good. This fruit did not come about by accident. It is the result of thousands, even millions of crossbreedings. Everything that it is today is a result of that hereditary tree. Don't you think it is ironic that a grape or even a dog or a cat should be so carefully bred, but that most humans depend on such a silly thing? as love. Then again, <laughs> there is something to be said for spontaneity. <laughs> is there? Okay. You're scaring me now. You know, hearing you talk, it reminds me of something. What is it? Alchemy? The transmutation of the Philosopher's Stone? Nope, that's not it. It was Ask Mr. Science. Y'all get that program here? Television? <sighs> I'm afraid not. Well, they had this bit about DNA. Kind of how DNA has this funny pasta shape, but it's really billions and billions of instructions, kind of. You get into DNA with your breeding program at all? Actually, DNA is an interesting issue, Mr. Knight. Did you know that the magic alchemists used was based on an intuitive understanding of the principles of DNA? I'll be darned. But to answer your question, no. I have my own ways of testing the vines. And they're far older and more traditional than DNA testing. Excuse me. Hello, Easy Excelsior. Mm -hmm. Ah, oui, oui, oui. oui. Préparez une autre pour sa leçon. Forgive me, I'm afraid I must return to the house. The news of the murder has quite upset my wife. Besides, my son awaits his afternoon lesson. Well, thanks for the interview, Mr. Montreux. You're most welcome. Au revoir, Mr. Knight. Kind of a nice fella. Yeah, sure, if you're into creepy dudes. Um, where did I have Parker bike? There it is. He does seem to have some weird ideas. And I call bullshit on the whole DNA thing there, but, um... I mean, the intuitive understanding of DNA. That sounds extremely unlikely. And I think we've done just about all we can. So we have to head back to our room, because we said we'd meet up with Grayson Mosley at 5. But we'll do that in the next video.